How does a spider know that a bug is caught in its net? How do you know when to approve your travel expenses? And how is an autonomous agent actually triggered? It all starts with an event. In the first video, we showed how to configure the SAP system and use SAP Event Mesh on the Business Technology Platform to send out an event from your SAP system. Now we want to do something with this event. Tell the spider to grab the bug, create an adaptive card in Teams to approve the travel expense or trigger an autonomous agent. In this video, we do the first step. Use the event in the SAP Event Mesh and trigger an external event. So in the previous video, we set up the scenario of sending events from an SAP system over to the business technology platform to event mesh, SAP event mesh in the business technology platform. So basically what we can do now is we, if we create a new user here, a new business partner, we did this all for the business partners, then uh, the business partners obviously created in the SAP system, we can see the message in here. So, so the message is now in, in the business technology platform. And what we also did, we created um, a small REST client that could actually fetch this specific business partner. Obviously, I can repeat this. So, so whenever now I create a new business partner or also when I, when I change a business partner, let's do this. Let's change the specific business partner. And then obviously, um, there, there's no new ID. But again, if I go in here, if I refresh this, I see there, there are new messages in here. And uh, similarly, if I query this in here, then I can see that uh, the, uh, the, the event is fetched and I now have a change um, business partner event. So this is already great. I, I can actually now fetch this information. But if I really want to push something out of this, if, if I want to do a, an, an update to an external system, then I need to send this event now from SAP Event Mesh over to another receiving system. And that's what I can easily do here with webhooks. So what I want to do is I want to create a webhook specifically for events that come in this specific queue. So we'll, we'll give this um, a name, send to webhook site. And that's actually something that I want to also do. So if I go to webhook.site, that's a, a, a nice receiving website where I can receive webhooks. And here's the unique um, ID for my specific scenario. So if I just take this URL and I say, please send um, the, uh, the, um, the event to this specific webhook URL. Then what I can also do is uh, typically there, there's always a handshake um, when you do um, when, when you when you set that set up this initial configuration, um, we could do this, um, but we can also just exempt the the handshake. So I'll just um, uh, say no, you, you don't need to make this um, initial handshake. Just send over the the information. We can also use different authentication mechanisms. Again, in our first step, we'll just use um, no authentication. Later on, we can really also set this up um, with uh, single sign-on and other um, scenarios. So I'll just click on create. And now actually, if I go here to this website again, you can see there was a first call from enterprise messaging. So really from our SAP system, it was an, an options call. So, so not a get or a post, but we can already see this initial configuration, this in initial um, integration is already set up. So what I'll do last is I can just resume so, so that um, this uh, subscription is actually active. So now if I again go back to our SAP system and let's let's create actually a new one, create another user, let's call it web hook as well. I save this. So now we have here the business partner 498. And if I go back to our website, refresh the screen like here, for example, then we can actually see all these events um, that were sent from the SAP system. So it, it might actually happen that there's a delay um, for, the, for the first time. So, so when you set up um, the webhook, um, that it takes some time before the first um, event is actually sent. So, so don't despair, just take a, a few moments and come back and refresh. Then you can see these events all sent here. So, so let me actually quickly go back and create one more, or, um, do another update here. So. Let's call this um, um, webhook2. If I go back here, then here you immediately see this is coming in. You can see um, this is a changed event. 
and you can see um, the business partner ID. And with this information, with these capabilities, we can now take this to the next level. So the first thing that we want to do is instead of sending the event, sending um, the event from the SAP system via this webhook to this um, webhook.site, we want to actually send it to Power Automate to trigger a flow, a Power Automate flow that then can use, uh, yeah, then, then can perform other tasks. So here in Power Automate, I'll just create a new, um, a new flow. We'll call this um, receive events from SAP. And we will use an HTTP trigger. So if I scroll down here, there's an, when an HTTP request is received, I'll take this trigger point here. Um, and for now, the, the only thing that we'll do is we will look at the input information. So, so basically we want to just parse the information that will be handed over um, via this, this screen here. Um, we do not yet have a schema, so I'll just leave it like this. And then if I just um, take a look here again at the HTTP trigger, right now um, only uses from this tenant. Um, for now, I'll just click this to, to anyone. So anyone who has the URL can actually trigger this um, Power Automate flow and send information to it. Um, as we'll see in a second, uh, we, we can enhance this obviously. Um, in, in the previous video, we looked at the webhooks and we saw that there are possibilities to um, do an authenticated call, to do a um, certificate based call and stuff like that. So these are all things that we can do at a later point. Right now, we're just interested in this URL. So I'll copy this URL. And with this, I go back to our um, SAP event mesh configuration page. So what we'll do is we'll create a new webhook. Um, we'll call this um, trigger power automate flow. And I will just provide here this specific webhook URL. Now, as before, we will not um, do a handshake, but we'll just send this over. For an authenticated flow, I would probably really do this um, handshake. I would do an authentication. But for now, again, just to show the end-to-end -end flow, we'll stick to this. So I'll click on Create. I will now actually pause um, this one because we don't need the events on the webhook side. And um, the Power Automate flow is now activated. That means if I now go to my SAP system, and go again to our transaction for the business partners and we'll create a new business partner and save this. Then uh, here we have the new business partner ID 499. And if I switch now to my Power Automate flow and if I actually go to the flows that have been triggered, then you can see there was a trigger like 10 seconds, se seconds ago. So it's 10 seconds ago, our flow was triggered. We take a look at the steps. So we can see there there's some, some information that was passed over. We can see exactly our business partner number. And that's really cool because now with this input, what we can do, we can just go here to our um, parse JSON action. We can tell that this is the payload with the business partner. We click on done <clears throat> and now I have also the business partner as a property. And now we, we come to the next step. So all of this, th there's no not really very sensitive information in this event. It, and it is just an event, a notification. There's not a huge payload. Potentially, I could enhance um, the event that is being sent from the SAP system. But in my case, having just this business partner ID is actually ideal because that allows me to even send this in an anonymous way without an authentication, potentially. Again, I in, in a productive environment, I would definitely recommend to make this more secure, to, to add um, authentication mechanisms. But especially for this scenario, this is perfect. Even if someone would intercept this message, they would just see the business partner ID. So how do I actually get to additional information? And that's now where we do a callback. So in Power Automate, um, we have an OData service and I can use here this read OData entity service. And with this service, we can now connect to our SAP system. So I can um, just say this is for the business partner and we're using basic authentication because obviously now I need to connect 
to my SAP system and authenticate. So I'll, I'll use this as the um, OData service and I will provide a username and password. Again, um, also um, authentication options, single sign options are supported here, which I could use. So I get the business partner ID and then I use this to retrieve additional information. And that's what I can do here. So I can use here the A business partner service and this A business partner service, if you read something, we need to obviously provide a business partner ID. And that's the business partner ID that I got via the previous event. So there is the business partner that I got from the initial trigger. I parsed the information and now I have this business partner available and I can read this information in a callback to the SAP system. So if I just save this again, and if we are going back to our SAP system, let's um, actually create a new one. Let's create yet another one. Holger Bochelt for Power Automate. And I save this. Then first of all, we have here our new business partner, 1500. And if I switch over to our Power Automate flow, you can see that there was a, a new trigger. So if we take a look at this one, we can see that there was an incoming request. You can see here that there's our 1,500. That this is the only information that is published via this event from the SAP system. We parse the relevant um, information. So, so we get the business partner as a property. And with this property, we can actually call our OData service. So we submit this business partner ID. And as a result, we get all the relevant information to this um, business partner. So this is the header information. And down here, we see all the relevant information from SAP. So actually, if I search here for Holger, then you can see um, this is the business partner full name. It's Holger Brocheld for Power Automate. You can see the business partner name, um, uh, the, the first name, and, and so on. So all the properties that are potentially stored in the SAP system are now available also in Power Automate. And with this, I can leverage all the functionality. I could publish this into Teams. I could um, trigger off another process. I could look up additional information. And that's the really, really powerful thing that now with the use of um, the configurations that we did in the previous video of in the S4HANA system, with the huge of use of the SAP event um, um, mesh service on the business technology platform, we can take this event and then send it to Power Automate and to trigger off a flow. In the next videos, we'll enhance this scenario even further. Um, we, we can now trigger agents that take this input, that look up additional knowledge sources, and then, then perform automated tasks. And that's obviously the, the really powerful thing that now, whenever something in SAP happens, we can trigger off these processes and uh, work not only with SAP, but with a lot of other SAP data and perform these autonomous tasks. Thank you very much for watching.